this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hello, happy Sunday, and welcome to First Metropolitan Baptist Church Sunday Worship Service. We're truly delighted that you're joining us online to share and worship. Here at First Metropolitan Baptist Church, we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. As we hear a word from heaven today from my very own interim pastor, Reverend Richard Smith, we pray that the message you receive will not only strengthen your faith, but comfort and keep you over the coming days. Please continue following CDC guidelines on social distancing. Wear your mask when necessary. Wash your hands frequently and sanitize often. But most importantly, please pray for each other. Once it is safe to do so, we invite you to come share with us here at First Metropolitan Baptist Church located at 3719 Bel Air Road in Augusta, Georgia to join us for our Sunday worship services. We have Sunday school beginning each Sunday morning at 930, where we do have classes for all ages, and our worship service follows at 11 a.m. Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us online to share and worship. We do invite you to join us again next week. Please have a wonderful, blessed, and safe week. Thank you for joining us today. Let us prepare our hearts and go to God in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, our Father, once more and again, we come before thy presence. Thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips. Thanking you for your abundant grace and mercy, which you shower down upon us each and every day. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us throughout this past week and for allowing us to see this glorious first day of the week. Day that we come together to praise you and to worship you corporately. Give honor to your holy and righteous name and to thank you for your dear son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent into the world to suffer and to die for our sins that we might be saved. We thank you that you raised him up after three days and thank you, Lord, that he has ascended to be at your right hand and that one day he shall come and come back for those who are putting their trust in him those of us who are sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we're so grateful for all of your many blessings. And Lord, we uh, come now asking, Lord, that you will just continue to watch over us day in and day out. Strengthen us and keep us in the midst of uh, this Delta variant. That you will watch over this church family and keep each of us. And that you will bless this church family and that you will just strengthen us and we look forward to that day when the doors will open and we will be able to come back together, sing those songs of Zion, and to pray prayers together, Lord, and, and to just fellowship one with another in this house. Lord, we're, we're just grateful, for, Father, and we also ask that, Lord, you continue to bless and strengthen those who have been affected by this virus, those families who've been touched and who have lost loved ones, Lord, and, those who are right now in hospitals. And Lord, we just ask that you would just strengthen and strengthen the doctors and the nurses. And Lord, we just pray that you will just bless the Lord that this nation will be able to come together. And that Lord, we will begin to take the 
health of others more seriously and begin to do those things necessary, Lord, to help us to get through this virus. And Lord, we're asking that you'll just move in such a way that we'll, that this virus will be eradicated, Lord. And, and until that time, just continue to touch and strengthen and keep us in your care. Lord, we pray that you will bless and strengthen children who will be going back to school. You'll protect our children, Lord, and watch over them. And Lord, that you'll bless and watch over teachers and administrators and all school personnel, bus drivers, and whatever capacity they may work, Lord, to educate our children. Lord, we pray that you'll protect and strengthen. And Lord, we pray for those who'll be going off to colleges and universities. So Lord, cover them and keep them in your care. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon our children here at First Metropolitan. You'll watch over them, strengthen them, bless them, Lord, that they will take their faith with them each and every day. And Lord, Lord, they will honor you. And Lord, that you will bless them, strengthen them, keep them in your care, we pray. Lord, we ask that you'll just bless those who are homeless, those who are in hospitals, nursing homes, and prison, those who are homeless, those who are right now in prison. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen their families. We pray for the body of believers throughout the world that you will bless and strengthen leaders of this nation and other nations, Lord, that we'll be, they'll be able to work together. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will protect our leaders, that you will strengthen them and give them wisdom to lead and to make decisions that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, I pray that you will bless me, allow me to preach your gospel. And Lord, I pray that it will reach and touch the hearts of your people. These and all blessings we ask in the righteous and holy name of your dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning we will look at the gospel recorded by Matthew and we'll look at the third chapter verses 16 and 17 in that third chapter and then we'll look over into that fourth chapter and we'll look at verses 1 through 11 in the fourth chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. Getting at verse 16 in chapter 3 and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Then, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, Thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set of him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the angel, the devil, leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The word of God for the people of God. This morning I want to share a word this morning. Faith that overcomes temptation. Faith that overcomes temptation. When we uh, look at this passage of the scripture, we see that Jesus was 
was baptized and as he came out of the water, the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended upon him and the voice, a voice from heaven came and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then following that, after hearing God the Father say of Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It seemed like he would have watched over him and guided him and kept him from temptation and all manner of evil. But the first thing that happened, we look at verse, at chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus was led up, not of the devil, but he was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And this is, this whole passage is a reminder for those of us who are believers. A lot of people come and they um, accept Christ. And there are people who walk away from the church because they say, you know, I've, you know, all kind of things begin to happen, and I, I just, you know, they, they you know, the, if, if the Lord, I, I, I joined, and I thought everything was going to be good, my life was going to be good, my, I won't have any problems about my children, I won't have any struggles in any areas of my life, and then, you know, they, they had a false perception of what it would be like to, to, to be a Christian and to walk this Christian journey in this life that we, which we live. But if we look at this passage of scripture, Jesus, whom God the Father said, this is my son, my beloved son, whom, in whom I am well pleased. If he had to go into the wilderness led by the Spirit in order to be tested or tempted by the devil, then how, who are we to not have to endure temptation and troubles in this life? If we look at verse 3, it refers to Satan as the tempter. It, it, it said that when the tempter came, so when Satan arrived, he came questioning who Jesus was. He said, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. He knew Jesus had fasted for 40 days and nights, and, and, and so he, he tempted Jesus at his physical point of need. He was hungry and needed nourishment. And so Satan questioned who he was. And then he proceeded to tempt Jesus at his point of physical need. But I want you to know that Jesus did not even bother to address the fact that Satan had questioned his place as the Son of God. He did not allow himself to be drawn into a test of wills with the devil. He did not take him up on his challenge to command stones to be made bread. Jesus simply referred Satan to scripture. Jesus displayed for us the importance of knowing scripture. And more importantly, understanding scripture and how to apply it rightly and to live accordingly. The tempter knows what tools to bring to the battle. So it's important that you and I know that our weaponry is the word of God. And therefore, we must understand it and we must be able to use it properly. Satan uses whatever he has 
at his disposal. That's why he uses people near to us and, and circumstances surrounding our lives. He is opportunistic in that way. The Spirit took Jesus into the wilderness. And when you think about the wilderness, the wilderness is a barren place. There was no food to be found there. And so Satan, being opportunistic, he, he found stones with which he could tempt Jesus. He said, if you are the son of God, command these stones be made bread. And he does the same thing to us. He'll take someone around us and, and, and they will become his mouthpiece to agitate us, to question who we are, to tempt us into sin, to back us off of our faith journey toward the blessing God has in store for us or to simply discourage us and to attempt to get us to give up or to get us to get what we need in a perverted manner. And by perverted we mean in a manner not prescribed by God or in an ungodly way. And so do not pervert your way or who you are to prove something to others. That's the point I want to make. So that, that do not pervert your way or who you are to prove something to others. Satan said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But Jesus was not willing to pervert who he is in order to prove something to Satan. Satan took him up next. He, he took him up into the holy city to the highest point of the temple. And again, he tested Jesus, temp, tested Jesus and tempted him as to his identity. When you know, uh, when, when, when you do not know who you are, and this is the, something important, when you do not know who you are, People can get you to do all kinds of things which go contrary to who God made you. Satan is the source of confusion and he is the father of lies. He wants to get us to the point where we will destroy ourselves. He, he cannot destroy us, but he can tempt us into destroying ourselves when we fail to have a true understanding of God and how we are to relate to him. In other words, if we do not have a true relationship with God and if we don't know who we are in God, Satan can tempt us into doing any and everything. But notice Jesus' response. Verse 7, he said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Satan wasn't finished. If you look at verses 8 and 9, verse 8, he said, Again, the devil taking him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And verse 9 said, And, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So well, not only did Satan show Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, but he showed him the glory of those kingdoms. The interesting thing is that Satan tempted Jesus with what, all, with, with what already belonged to him. The Gospel of John tells us in chapter 1 that there was not anything made that was not made by him. Again, he attempts to pervert the gospel, the truth of the gospel. He knows that one, that one day God is going to give into Jesus' hands the authority to reign for a thousand years, that millennial reign in his coming kingdom. So, so he wants to get Jesus to seek a perverted way, a way in which he would not have to endure the pain, bearing the scars of the cross. 
want him to do it in a way that would dishonor him and with, that would dishonor God. And that's the struggle that many have today, including believers. We see the world around us and the glory of it all. And Satan comes along with temptations in an attempt to pervert our way. That is why we should not be surprised when we see the lengths that some will go in an attempt to achieve glory and fame and power in this world. We have to remind ourselves that if Satan came to Jesus after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, certainly he's going to come. To those of us who were born of the flesh and who must be born again in the spirit. And so when we find folk who have not been born again in the spirit, we shouldn't be surprised that the length in which they will go to accomplish or to satisfy the flesh. Oftentimes, people look upon a believer who has fallen into these traps and will say, I thought that they were Christian. When I text this morning, for this morning message, we see that Satan attacked Jesus at the very core of who he is. He's the son of God, and yet Satan, knowing that, attacked him at the very core of who he is. So, so, so you know that he's going to come and he's going to try to attack us. He attacked him during an extremely weak moment in his life. But Jesus, knowing who he is, never wavered. And he never put his physical needs above the word of God and above his relationship with his father. He, he held fast to that relationship with his father. And so rather than look down upon the fallen, it behooves us to learn from Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, as to how we are to handle the temptations of satisfying the needs in our lives. It could be a physical need. It could be a need for love and acceptance. It, it could be the need to feel important and appreciated. But whatever the need is, we should keep our mind in Christ and go about fulfilling those needs in a God-approved manner rather than the temptation of perversion. When we look at the world around us, we see that Satan has convinced many that there is no God. He's convinced others that man himself is a God. He has perverted the truth about creation. And we're trying to explain away God's role in creating everything that we see and in, in creating man and in creating all of the creatures that walk or that swim or that fly upon this planet that we call Earth. He has perverted sexuality. He has destroyed the idea of family. He has, in some cases, destroyed the idea of mutual love and brotherly fellowship among the races and ethnicities. He has caused rifts between nations because of a perverted desire for power and for dominance. But as Christians and believers in Christ, we did not come up out of water of baptism into the right hand of fellowship to live in ease. But Christ came out of the water of baptism to fast 40 days and nights only to be taken into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. And so we too must be prepared for battle that our faith can overcome 
the temptations of life. We must do as Paul told the church in his letters to the Ephesians, we must put on the whole armor of God. That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We must have our loins girt about with truth. And we must put on the breastplate of righteousness and have our feet sharp with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And if we can hold on to our faith and keep our trust in God and keep our hands in God's hand, and if we can understand and know that I don't have to yield to temptation, but in my faith I can overcome what the enemy is putting in my path. If we can understand those things. God, if we look at our text, he, he, he showed up. The, 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 the Bible says then, verse 11, then the devil leaveth him. The word of God tells us that if we can resist the devil, he'll flee. Verse 11, the devil left Jesus after Jesus held on to who he was, to who he is. And he held on to his relationship with God the Father and, and he understood, yes, I could have all of these things, but, 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 but what, he, what, what, what he said was, I, I know what I can have, but I'm not going to fall for your trick because I already have it. I came from the Father. I was there, and there was nothing created that was created without me. And I know that one day I have to suffer the cup of death on the cross. But I also know that there'll be three days when I get up again, and then I have all power in my hand. And that he'll have the power then to cast Satan and the beast into the lake of fire. But Jesus, in verse 11, had angels who came and they ministered unto him. And so that tells me something from baptism to the right hand of fellowship to the troubles and the temptation and all the struggles in life that I go through. If I can resist, the devil will flee. And not only will he flee, but God will send angels to minister to my need. He'll supply all of my needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But we got to hold on. We got to overcome the struggles and the temptations of the world. And we got to overcome the things that Satan would throw at us. And I said earlier, he knows who to use and how to use them. And what circumstances to use. And sometimes not always other people. It can be our, we can be our own worst enemy. We begin to doubt God and we begin to be afraid to move in what God is trying to get us to move in. And so we begin to talk ourselves out of blessing that God has for us because we see the struggle and the trouble. But God knows that if we can resist the temptation and the fear and to walk in what God, that path that God has prepared for us, he already knows that we can hold on to our faith. He has something better on the other side. How many of us have gone through some things? And it seemed like, our Lord, I'm praying, but nothing is happening. And at every turn, Satan is giving me trouble on every side. Same thing happened in our text. My, be well, my beloved son, and my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, but yet he had to go through a wilderness experience, and he had to go through a period of being tempted and being challenged by who he is in God, and yet he held on because he knew God, he knew the Word of God, and he put the devil on the run because he was able to. Stay grounded and rooted in the word and to use the word to overcome the enemy. And angels came and ministered to him. So for us, by faith, let us overcome the temptations and the evil that's thrown at us by, the, by Satan on a regular basis. And know that when we come through this, 
God will send the angels to minister to us and to strengthen us and to encourage us on this journey. And there's going to come a day when the trump shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise. And those that are still here on earth will be caught up to meet him in the air. And we'll be there on that day when he sentences Satan and all of his little demons and all of those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ will be there witnessing with Jesus as he wins the final battle. Will you bow your head, everlasting God, our Father, help us to overcome the temptation, the struggles, the agitation, the discouragement that we have to deal with on a regular basis living in this world, a world that has rejected Jesus, and a world that seeks to wrestle control from you. Strengthen us, Lord. And keep us day by day. Someone right now who is in a struggle and they feel like giving up and walking away from the faith, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will strengthen them and encourage them and let them know that they can dig into your word and read your word. They can continue to pray and ask your strength that, Lord, you're able to help strengthen them through every struggle, every discouragement, every temptation, every bit of agitation. And, Lord, you're able, Lord, to send angels to minister to their needs. Someone who has never known you, who've never tried you. But they came across this message, Lord, in my prayer, Lord, that they will pray a prayer of faith and confess that they are sin. And that, Lord, they will ask you to come into their life. And that, Lord, they will yield themselves to you. And that you be the Lord of their life. Lord, we pray this prayer and we give thanks in the mighty and holy and righteous name of your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep each of us from falling and to present each of us faultless before his father's throne. To the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen.